it's the display that usually shows this that starts recording, as mm. opposed to the one with the slides. Now, maybe I can do it that way, and that would make sense. And you then know. just put the slides on, on the one that it's recording? Yeah, that might work. Well, let's see so, what happens. So, so long as you can It's recording it. this one now. Okay. So, it works? No, no, now it's recording the main oh. screen. Where oh, I, I, put see. The, where, I, I yeah. see, I see. Yeah, so it's... it's so okay. it's, it's taunting I tricked you. it. I've tricked it. <laughs> ah. Genius! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello and welcome to Well There's Your Problem, a podcast about Justin outwitting slides. <laughs> I am officially smarter than the computer. <laughs> I am God. My consciousness has merged into the machine. I am beyond Twitter. I am all things at all times. <laughs> I, just, I just, you know, troned right into the computer. Mm -hmm. Good movie. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, now, now that now that this is now that less you've, dumb, yeah, defeated uh, screen sharing. I, uh, I defeated now that you've the, triumphed the final over boss, technology. Yeah, the, the final boss of the a a AMD screen recording software. Um, <laughs> well, welcome to well, there's your problem. A podcast about engineering disasters. Uh, which is in and of itself a disaster, and also it has slides. Uh, mm. I'm Justin Rosniak. Uh, I'm the person who's talking right now. I also have a degree in it. Uh, I don't know. Should we start like introducing like uh, I'm I'm the guy who's like the engineer. Sure. Yeah. You you can yeah. like list your actual qualifications, and then we can just be like, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I actually have a degree in engineering, so you know mm. that most of the time I know what I'm talking about some of the time. Okay. <laughs> Although, to be fair, your degree is from Drexel University, so... Ouch. Yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah it's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, okay, Alice Caldwell-Kelly. Uh, oh, Justin, you forgot your fucking uh, pronouns. I pronouns. No, my, my, pron my pronouns are civil and engineer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly. My pronouns are she and her. I, my sole qualification for this is that, like, I was recording another podcast before this. I have uh, two thirds of a law degree, and I'm probably going to like walk the third year because of the coronavirus, just making exams impossible. Hey, congratulations! Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Getting in by default. Hey, uh, my dad got into UConn Law because he took a broad a history of broadcasting class at UMass and literally said oh, to rules. himself, two months before graduation, uh, I don't know what to do, so I'll just fucking go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Liam Anderson. I am still on Twitter, unlike some people, at Old Man Anderson. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And my qualifications are that I have lived with Do Not Eat for the past five years, and I have degrees, uh, bachelor's degrees in math and in economics, uh, because Rutgers fucked up the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> we also have to introduce the Activate Windows thing, the fourth yeah, host been, uh, is back. Pronouns yeah, that's are windows corporate and I... greed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, should be people really were missing it. BSD. It's, it's can I, when I switched over to daylight savings time, what? I had to resync the time, <laughs> and then when I resync the time, activate Windows came back because it wouldn't the... let me resync with the 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 atomic clock at the Naval Observatory. It only let me resync with Windows.com. This Windows is the got, story about got... the fucking uh, you not being able to email anybody over fifty miles away. The, like <laughs> Jesus. So anyway. What do you see on the screen here it is an old-timey parade uh, going down Broad Street in mm. Philadelphia. It looks right? like shit. Hey, fuck uh, off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Settle down there, Glasgow. <laughs> hey, we, we, we suspended all of our Orange Order marches, which is very good because they're like quasi-fascist uh, because of the <laughs> coronavirus. So no parades for us. Philly sports teams are never going to win another goddamn thing, so no parades for us either. <laughs> R.I.P. Tom Brady. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't let's Touch not let's not get into it. Touchdown, Tom! Touchdown, Tom! Has finally we can count him out now. 
<laughs> yes. now they're going to call him Tampa Tom, and I'm going to have to sit through 17 weeks of that. <laughs> look, look, my one flaw as a human being is that I'm a Patriots fan. <laughs> But when I read else. the statement, he was like, uh, my football journey is continuing, but not in New England. I was like, well, what, space? Like, what? Tom Brady <laughs> to, going to, to the one place <laughs> untouched by the NFL. Yeah. Space! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the moon is actually in the CFL, is the thing. Oh, I figured they would just be part of whatever goddamn Florida team. <laughs> now, what we're looking at here is a parade to sell war bonds. In 1918, um, mm. this this ugly looking float that's actually a, a seaplane with um, the wings oh, cut off, so it wouldn't. I see. So it could that's fit. the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why? <laughs> well, why would you do <laughs> that? Welcome to Philly, because plane, planes <laughs> were very new at the time and exciting. So, in order to understand why this became the deadliest parade mm -hmm. in United States history, oh, birds. <laughs> as yet yeah T tbd we need to talk about something uh almost timely which was the spanish influenza Woo! it's almost like we picked this on purpose yes ah and you said we don't plan anything suck it <laughs> listeners <laughs> well we, we didn't we didn't really plan this one. Oh wow uh, i put i put this all together today i did a whole presentation um, <laughs> on this hmm oh well you should have offered to help them. I did! Twice! <sighs> this did, is the most you? kind of, oh, would you like to come up and teach the class thing? <laughs> 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 what was the Spanish flu? It was a type of H1N1 influenza, right? That's similar to the swine flu from 2009, if anyone remembers that. Mm. Uh, but it was much less deadly. Or excuse me, much more deadly. <laughs> yeah, the the two the two things you don't want to get mixed <laughs> up. Swine flu was less deadly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get that mixed up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is basically what the UK's like coronavirus strategy was. Was we like we did an inflammable means flammable? What a country thing. <laughs> we were just like we were holding the graph upside down the whole time, and we were just like, oh, we should have been doing the opposite of that. Okay, <laughs> so. This caused, um, the, the Spanish influenza was unique because it caused a disproportionate immune system response in young, healthy people, right? And mm. that tended to kill a lot of them. Opposite of this. Um, yes. You, you get what's called a cytokine storm, which is where your immune system sort of starts uh, eating itself, totally which is not good. You, yeah. Yeah, you, oh, you, don't, you don't want to see oh, it geez, happen. Oh jeez, it's the flu. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sort of like, it gets like the sort of helmet fire thing where it thinks everything is the flu, and so your organs, flu, um, uh, other white blood cells, flu, uh, and so it just kind of like fights all of it, which is not good, Yeah, uh, and you tend to like die. Yes. Says your body starts doing leftist infighting. <laughs> yeah, your, your body becomes a Posadist. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also, you know, this is exacerbated because it's 1918. There's not great hy hygiene in hospitals. You know, there's wartime shortages of materials and food. So, you know, mm. it's one well, of the, the reasons. The, the war is like one of the reasons why it kills young people more is that all of the young people are concentrated. Yeah, it's and yeah. it's the reverse of normal actually because normally, you know, if someone has a mild case of the flu, they'll, uh, you know, they'll basically quarantine themselves. Uh, and, yes. and, and do and, that. Go out, Stay but, home. Like, if you've got a really severe case of the flu, you're just gonna like. You're absolutely gonna stay home. You're not. You're not gonna. You know, go out public. You got a mild flu. You might. You know, go out or whatever. But when you've got a whole bunch of people with some really bad flu, and they're all on loaded down train cars coming back from the front, you know, it's just gonna rip through uh, the camps, hospitals, all that stuff. Yeah. If you have a mild illness, you stay at the front. If you're really sick, they evacuate you. Right. And so you're in a field hospital with a bunch of other people, some of whom like might just be injured or whatever. Uh, and did you see there this picture that we have here? There's like a, a field hospital at this point is just you stick a bunch of beds in a room. Right. Uh yep. And it's worth noting that super infection, which is when you get an infection on top of your infection, I believe is what ended up killing most people. Invented by exhibit? <laughs> <laughs> we put an infection in your infection, dog. So your mortality rate is going to be through the roof, dog. <laughs> 95%, baby, let's do it. 
So the 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 Spanish influenza uh, hit twice, right? Mm. Once in the winter of 1918 through 1919, and once in the winter of 1919 through 1920. It is worse in 1918 through 1919, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's that's something we're trying to avoid doing with the coronavirus. Is we quarantine everybody, and then everybody gets out of quarantine and just starts like touching each other and licking things, and then everybody gets sick uh, six months after. Yeah. yeah. A more virulent, a worse strain of, uh, disappeared in August 1918, and the deadliest month for it was October 1918, just to kind of give you an hmm. idea. Cool. I, I'm just looking at how uncomfortable those beds look. Like, the idea that you're dying and you just like, and possibly having survived the First World War, and they're like, yeah, let's just get you out onto this fucking card table. Uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's cool. Good luck. Uh, I feel good about that. Yeah. Uh, this, this flu was also exacerbated by the fact that they hadn't really invented vaccines yet. Mm. Vaccines weren't really a, a thing. And of course, you know, it takes time to develop those anyway. Um, well, on the other hand, none of these guys ever developed autism, so it's impossible to say whether it's good or not. Know, um, That's a good point. Maybe the media <laughs> suppressed it. And to be fair, the smallpox vaccine was invented in 1796. It's just really fucking hard to invent a vaccine for something like this. Mm. They got their they got their autism from hats, not from <laughs> yeah, not from it's vaccines. True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining Jenny McCarthy as like an anti-hat activist. <laughs> this is what the government doesn't want you to know, as Mercury is literally flowing out of her ears. <laughs> so, so yeah, the only only real effective way to stop the transmission of Spanish flu was, you know, social distancing, such as what we're doing now. Excited to do this for the next 18 months until the vaccine yeah, is out. A, a growth, a growth industry, uh, podcasting, and of course, like in... 1918, they didn't have podcasts, they only had radio, which they called the wireless, and which they used to transmit racism to each other. Um, <laughs> Bob Coughlin, baby. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I, I love to like tune in my gigantic Victrola set into like the racial hygiene hour uh, while I'm like coughing my lungs out. That's very fun to me. Now you just tune into like a number station, but it's just saying various slurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we don't know that the number stations now aren't doing that. That would be the That's deepest true. cover. That's the way you get away with saying slurs, is you just encode <laughs> them on a one-time pad, and you transmit them from like a, a shadowy government-controlled radio station. <laughs> Uncancelable. If, if a white guy shouts the N-word in the forest and no one's around to hear it, was he racist? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, think, I think the answer is yes. You've been on quarantine um, for like three days, man. <laughs> it's, it's only going to get weirder from here. Yeah. So, the Spanish flu, you know, it's Spanish in so much as the vast majority of recorded reported cases were in Spain, right? Yeah, but it's not actually. Yeah, Spain was not in World War One, so there were no like media censors to you know say, oh, you can't you can't report that; it's demoralizing, right? Yeah, it was everywhere. We've got to we've got to redress this issue. We've got to like stop calling it Spanish flu because it started in Kansas, maybe uh, in Has Haskell County, Kansas, where uh, a bunch of like guys got sick and then they uh, joined, well, they got drafted, and they went to Fort Riley in Kansas, which is what we're seeing here, that's a field hospital at Fort Riley, uh, and then to Europe, and then the world. So it should be Kansas flu, we should call it Kansas flu. There are oh. also theories that it came out of China, uh, and yeah. uh, troop uh. staging and camp uh, in France. A uh, British troop staging. And hmm. yeah, in France, by the way, Alex. <laughs> no, I, I, so, I, I, I like my, I like my thing better. Yeah, I yeah. like my thing uh, better. I'm sure you do. Rock chalk, baby. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a reverse Trump thing. You know how where he's doing like the China virus. I'm gonna just be like this whole time. I'm just gonna be like the Kansas virus. Kansas is a virus in and of itself. The America virus. He's gonna get confused in three days and start calling it the China syndrome. <laughs> Terrible movie. Yeah, it's when you have a fever so bad that it like starts melting the ground underneath you. <laughs> this is this is a virus that turns you into a nuclear reactor, <laughs> and then you. Anyway, the the Spanish flu uh, 
uh, killed anywhere between 17 to 100 million people, depending on what study you believe. Mm. Um, it's not good. Yeah, that's between 1 and 6% of the world population at the time. Mm. Right? And I mean, like, it, you got these kind of, these weird idiosyncrasies, like, um, American Samoa had no cases, because the governor blockaded ships, but then, um, like, Western Samoa did, and lost like 10% of the population, because New Zealand just didn't bother doing any quarantine, and so you just have a plague ship that has all of your stuff on it, uh, just comes into port and just fucking kills everybody. Um, <laughs> it's not great. Yeah, it's gone poorly. Mm-hmm. Which at, what we're kind of seeing again, like that one that one person in South Korea, patient thirty one, who was just like symptomatically infected with the coronavirus and uh, just kind of walked around Seoul for a while, then went to church and then went to a, a buffet. Which I always knew my distrust of buffet. I knew that sneeze guard wasn't going to protect me. Went down to the Golden Corral in downtown mm. Seoul. <laughs> There's also somebody just stuck his face in the chocolate fountain. They announced today that there's a, there's a patient in Newark, uh, New Jersey, who apparently just gave a fake name, gave a fake address, and then bounced despite having coronavirus. <laughs> so, yeah. excellent. Yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, awesome. the, if, if you want the uh, the the local angle from my end, Glasgow, uh, Greater Glasgow and Clyde NHS Health Board. Put out a tweet being like, "Hey, we're kind of disappointed that people keep stealing the hand sanitizer off of the walls of hospitals because we kind of need it." <laughs> well, like, you, know, you, know, you, you don't need sanitation in hospitals. What are you nah, talking about? Fine. <laughs> I, I, I just love the idea that instead of taking the container, there was just some mastermind pulling a heist of just like pushing the thing fifty times and just walking away with like a cupped hand full of hand sanitizer. <laughs> It's like it's worth more than gold. <laughs> so, the other thing we need to talk about to under for context here is war bonds. Hmm. Okay. The fuck is going on with all of these posters? If you can't enlist, invest, Alice. Can't you read? And we have to go kill some Germans. Well, that's that's making that's making the the communism very clear. But I like the one on the left. I like the guy with like a bandage on who is just like lackadaisically firing a pistol, which like <laughs> he's just like kind of like indifferent about it. That's I I like that a lot. Um, doing a uh, doing doing some uh, contraposto, the right word. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, also like uh, the the German on the far right has the like pointy helmet, but also a silhouetted mustache. That's very funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's a war bond, right? Well, wars are expensive, right? Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. So we have a, a modern concept in warfare, which is you know you just uh, keep printing treasury bonds, you know, forever and ever. And no one ever notices the cost of a war, right? That's how we do it today. Yeah. My modern monetary theory. I, I <laughs> thought that we we were running the government like a household, and we had to like spend within our means. Yeah, tighten that belt, except for doing war crimes. Yeah, of course. We we are we are running the country like a household, uh, a household with a big printing press in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> we just run run off money. <laughs> so the the old the old concept though was rather than just issuing treasury bonds willy-nilly like we do now, is you, you have like specific war bond, uh, uh, specific war bonds to pay for wars, right? So, you know, you, you issue war bonds, the public buys them, a lot of times it's institutional investors, but you also sort of try and push them to the general public too, right? So it's, it's, it's a loan, right? You, you, you pay so much and then it matures when we win the war, right? Uh, matures, they're all, they were all fixed, um, they were all for a fixed time, like, I think mm. the first, the first, uh, war bonds, they were called Liberty Bonds in World War One. um, matured in 30 years at, like, 4% interest or something like that, huh. um, you know, but they varied over time. Uh, there were, there were two Liberty Loan Acts at first, right? They, they marketed these bonds uh, or loans, I'm just sort of using that interchangeably because they kind of used it interchangeably. Um, 
they didn't perform especially well. Uh, they were mostly bought by institutional investors rather than the general public. Um, and they, um, you know, they, they started like trading for like less than their value. So, you know, they weren't seen as like very valuable, right? <laughs> that's, that's not so good. I, yeah. I want the opportunity to like do an uncut gems thing and like place like a 28 way parlay on the war. <laughs> uh, I, I want to like be able to bet about like field goals and conversions. <laughs> so the third Liberty Loan Act is when the government starts to you know drum up patriotism about the whole thing. Like it's your patriotic duty. You gotta go out. You gotta buy these Liberty loans, these Liberty bonds, right? So you know they have like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts go sell them door to door, right? They did parades. They had a they had a special aerial stunt team from the u.s army they would do, do they would they would they would fly trainer planes over like little rural towns and do acrobatic stunts over them and then when they when they landed afterwards after the whole town had come out to see this newfangled flying machine they would say uh buy buy liberty bonds if you mm. buy a Liberty Bond right now, you get an, a free airplane ride. <laughs> <laughs> this was before safety was invented. They also put thing. on yes. mock dog uh, fights, which is what? What? It's not like literal dog fights. <laughs> Fucking excuse me. But I like me? the idea of like what are these? What are these uh, Bond salesman pilots? You know, going into like a 1917 dive and just absolutely eating it. And just being like, see, <laughs> this is what we're all about. You have to buy these. <laughs> well, they also like that they, they drove a lot of tanks into like city squares and stuff, and they would just like park the tank there, and so you could like climb on the tank and stuff. Uh, and it would have like a big war bond sign on it. Would that Very be cool. like? Would would that be like the the World War One tank with the tread that went all the way? Yeah, over? yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, photos, I think. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they also had you know celebrities. Uh, try and sell, you know, war bonds at rallies. Yeah, but, you know, in as much now... as they had celebrities in 1917, it's like Fatty Arbuckle wants you to buy Liberty bonds. Like, cool, man. man I, th I think awesome. uh, I think Charlie Chaplin was uh, big on yeah, trying to he push made war his bonds. Own movie about it at his own expense, called just the bond. Huh. Uh, you could never trust the Swiss. So sounds 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 not good. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was about to say the. Uh, the bond sounds suspiciously close to the bund. Um, <laughs> uh, not not that Charlie Chaplin was a fascist. We know that like the great dictator, so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> three days of quarantine, and you're having to clarify that you didn't just say that Charlie Chaplin was a fascist. <laughs> we're struggling. We're struggling a bit, admittedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. But anyway, they made it so, you know, it's your patriotic duty to go out, buy war bonds, go, uh, liberty bonds, so on and so forth. Now, um, so, oh boy. September 19th, <laughs> 1918, right? Hmm. World War I was winding down at this point, right? And the American soldiers were coming home, and the Spanish flu was very much around, right? Yeah. So... The first reported case of Spanish flu was on September 19th, 1918, and they had that contained in the Navy Yard, right? The Navy Yard is down here, right? You, you see mm -hmm. how there's like all these piers with like boats and stuff? Yeah, stuff the Navy needs. That's on account of it being the Navy Yard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Pretty big the yard. Navy what? Oh, just that it's a big yard. I was just joking about the like yeah. the the varying use of the word yard here. Ah, uh, yes. Within a, a a couple of days, there were six hundred sailors infected with the Spanish oh. influenza down at the navy yard. <laughs> it's cool. They, they they were all doing like viral TikToks where they were like all dancing and stuff. Uh, so you know how how do you how do you transmit that over the radio? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Start I, racist I mean, music. Stop! <laughs> Start! White man attempting to rap. Stop! <laughs> I mean, they did try to, like, they did have ways of transmitting images over um, a telegraph, so... Oh, that's true, yeah. I suppose if you just, like, did a bunch of those, and then you, like, ha had the instructions to, like, uh, make a flip book out of them, you, you could have a very long latency 1910s 
uh, TikTok. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, uh, blah, blah. What was I saying? Um, You're so, talking about how 600 of them had immediately yes. got infected because washing wasn't invented it yet. It had come down from yes, Boston, exactly. I believe, on an infected Navy ship. Mm. Uh, once again, once again, Boston tries to screw over Philly. Die, um, die, so, die. <laughs> so this was this was a containable problem, right? Because the Navy Yard, as you can see, like center center city is up here, right? And the Navy mm. Yard is all the way down here. This this line is roughly Broad Street, which we're going to talk about in a second, and then everything below about this line. At this area, at at this time in history, was just wasteland and undeveloped, right? Mm -hmm. um, Much like today. Now it's it, yeah. Now it's <laughs> still that, except it's you know it's it's the sports <laughs> complex, um, in the weird parts of South Philly, um, mm. as but, opposed to the like very normal parts. Yeah, that, I mean, that, I, yeah. I, I can't judge Glasgow. Like Glasgow still has neighborhoods that look like Stalingrad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got those. <laughs> yeah, we also have those. Yeah, hmm. those those usually aren't in South Philly though. No, those are in North Philly, Philly. Yeah. or Southwest Philly, hey. hmm. or Camden. So basically, <laughs> just draw a circle, right? Yeah, draw a circle. Draw, draw a circle. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking, beginning to see the 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 beginnings of the Wu Tang logo <laughs> here. <laughs> All right, so the, 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 they're all down in the Navy Yard. They're they're quarantined away from the population, right? Yeah, sleeping on card tables in like one giant hole. Uh, yeah, you know, you can you can sleep on the card table, then you 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 flip, you you wake up, you get out of bed, and you can play cards all day. Oh, I guess. <laughs> so. Everyone's playing solitaire to maintain mm. the quarantine. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to be an all like solitaire based podcast. <laughs> Don't spit. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So. Don't spit. <laughs> Don't spit. Like, spit. It looks like a shit post. <laughs> like I'm missing the apostrophe. Of so the it's war, just, all caps spit. for some reason in Europe. <laughs> the curling is terrible. There are. Fifteen hundred cases. <laughs> what? Yeah, why is everything in different fonts? Because you have to like hand paint every sign. I it, it, like didn't leave enough space for fifteen hundred, so it just kind of looks like. <laughs> yeah. It's a part of the. It's a part of the sign they have to change every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the McDonald's thing, where it's like millions served. It's like there are six hundred. Fifteen hundred, <laughs> uh, three thousand. Yeah, no, cool. Um, but spitting right. spread Spanish. Oh shit! Yes. <laughs> Don't yeah. spit. Can't you read? <laughs> <laughs> I Don't mean, spit. this is you this is develop an accent. <laughs> <laughs> This is something that like Glasgow could use. A number of people who just like spit in the gutter, and, like in the street here. And, yeah, we. I. I. I don't know. I don't understand it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna print out. I'm gonna run up some of these uh, and just and just fucking tell everybody. Don't spit. The <laughs> shit <laughs> so, so on September twenty eighth, uh, there was a Liberty Loan parade scheduled. Right. Oh, good. Yes. This was for the fourth Liberty Loan Drive. Because even though the war was winding down, the government still had a bunch of bills to pay, right? Sure. Um, so I, war keeps being expensive after it's over, right? Like, yes. You gotta, you gotta move all the shit back, and uh, yeah. So, it's fine. You need, you yeah. need more war bonds. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so this, is, this was going to be a big event, right? There's gonna be the big military parade down Broad Street. You can see all the cool military stuff. John Philip Sousa was gonna be there. Yeah, they they had the biggest celebrity in the world, John Philip Sousa, <laughs> the um the the Lin Manuel Miranda of his day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just love the idea of John Philip Sousa posting like Lin Manuel Miranda posts. Like you know he does those like inspirational morning posts. I fucking hate those. Uh good morning. Uh, good morning. It's, it's always hey, good it's, morning. It, I hate yeah, that shit. It, good morning. It's it's your self confidence here, just giving you a little boost. Um, yeah, no, I you fuck ugh. yourself, man. People are dying. <laughs> mm hmm. Don't don't spit. Don't spit. Is don't the spit. thing. John Philip Sousa opening for like 
Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there was this guy, Wilmer Krusen, right? <laughs> yes. So how not a German yes. player? No. That we know of. <laughs> oh. Good point. Good point. He mm. may be one of the. Uh, he may be one of the Huns. <laughs> Again, Wilmer Cruzen sounds like the set up to like a a, a, a Ligma Balls joke. Yes, yes. I, <laughs> the one guy so, trying to do his job in this stupid fucking city. Yeah, yeah, and, and he had a cut, He had a clown ass name. So Wilmer Cruzen was the Philadelphia Health Commissioner, right? Um, and he was, you know, he was aware of the Spanish influenza, being as he was the health commissioner, mm -hmm. and it was his call, finally, whether the parade should go forward or not, right? Sure. And, of, of course, this being a podcast about things that go well... Uh, well, he was under a lot of political pressure. Yes. He was, he really was. To oh, let this parade go forward, right? Because... I, I I don't know if he was suspected of being a Hun or not, um, but <laughs> it's like nobody normal is named Wilma. Uh, he said stuff like the flu won't spread beyond military camps, and the press, you know, the Inquirer, um, basically was just like, why are they reporting on all the bad news? Like, why why are the why is the city being so negative about like an, a pandemic? Yeah, genuinely they were. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. So he's under, you know, immense political pressure. Yeah, there, 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 there were like leaders, there were like leads that were like, yeah. uh, uh, why, why is everybody panicking? Uh, you, why th are you trying to kill yeah. my vibe? Yeah. yeah, it's it's all doom and gloom. Yeah. No, nobody's happy <laughs> with winning the war. You know, just be happy. Don't spit. It's only game. Why you have to be mad? <laughs> <laughs> So, but, you know, there's there's stuff like the city had a, had a quota of bonds to sell and all kinds of other stuff, so Wilmer's like, fine, I guess. do the fucking parade. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was doing accelerationism. Yeah. He was doing yeah. degrowth. Yes. <laughs> he, he, pulled a, he pulled a punch as pilot, is what he did. Mm. He washed his hands of the matter when no one else wanted Literally. to. Literally. Just as just so long as you do it for <laughs> 20 seconds, yeah. uh, soap and water. Soap and hang it. <laughs> you know, and this, this, uh, the parade promoters didn't help with this. They were like, um, they threw, they put an ad in the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer that said, Citizens, a crisis is here. The influenza epidemic imperils the success of the fourth Liberty Loan. The government calls upon you not to forget your duty to the fighters in France. Mom, Dad, Bart's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so there were some warnings posted about spreading the disease from coughing or spitting. You know, make sure you 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 cough into your arm. Make sure you don't spit. Don't spit. Um, I, I, don't spit. I was. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't understand that that was a thing that people even really did until I moved up here. But yeah, people would just be spitting in the street. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Stop it! Stop doing that. But the parade went on. Okay. All right. So this is the only picture of the parade I know of. Now, um, I mean, it, it, look at it this way: there isn't like a gutter in the middle of the street just filled with spit. So they fucking they listened. Yeah, uh, or maybe all the spit washed away, all the, yeah, all the debris. True, yeah. yeah. So, 200,000 people show up for this parade, right? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing else to do in 1918 Philadelphia. Hell no, there's that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, you, so. you, you can listen to, like, Capone speakeasy, or behold, your, uh, your like, uh, flobotogenation, your engineering podcast. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but like, aside from that, you basically have to go out and you have to go look at the dumb seaplane float, which I hate to look at. It's stupid. I hate it. Uh, I, I I don't respect it. Also, um, one thing I did find, I, I don't think we have a picture of this, but they had a float of like doctors and nurses from the American Red Cross in a weird medical themed Viking lifeboat. Yes. Yes, they uh, did. Like, oh my god. Like it was like a, it was literally it was like a longboat, and the sail had like the red cross on it, and they had a bunch of like scrubbed up, gowned and masked doctors and nurses just kind of like rowing this this uh like 
this longboat. It was cool. Just, just very normal, very normal hours. But lots of, lots of Swedish immigrants in uh, Philadelphia. It being, mm. you know, having started out as a Swedish colony. Um, <laughs> right, so, you know, this is a typical, very crowded Broad Street parade. Um, you know, if you've ever, if you've ever been to a parade on Broad Street, you know, well, usually it's, I mean, almost universally, it's just a lot of people getting extremely drunk in public. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it's my right as an American asshole. <laughs> I'm glad that we're not like continuing that tradition through our current pandemic of just like Americans getting drunk in public and being all up in each other's personal well, space. Not for a lack of trying, <laughs> though. Yeah, mm. I was about to say, Mayor Kenny almost didn't cancel the St. Patrick's Day parade. Cool. That's fine. Alco alcohol is like it's a preventative. You just you keep your BAC above like five. You'd be fine. It's absolutely true. I mean, at that point, it's I, more of a tr a attrition. That's exactly right. It dies first. You were the virus. That's exactly right, baby. <laughs> we just playing a game of chicken. <laughs> yeah, just feeling really bad for the virus that doesn't know what it's got itself into. That it's like inside your body and it's having What's to fight off that. Pure like horror. <laughs> All the things I've done to my body in the last twenty eight years. Like, yeah, good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, developed a severe resistance to like dyed green pints. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this is unfortunately now a um a Bud Light resistant virus. Oh no! <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to switch to Miller Light. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we should just like uh, I I figured out the problem, the solution to the like uh, Glasgow hand sanitizer theft is we should just like have bottles of Buckfast on the hand sanitizer <laughs> stations because nothing is surviving that. No. Like it, it's paint stripper. <laughs> it's just free liquor dispensers around the city. We'll get mm. there. We'll get there. Well, they'll have to. They shut down all the wine and spirit well, stores. I, I know. I was. Talking about the thing. This is this is why you got a stockpile. That's the thing. Way ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to have like a a room full of like cases of alcohol. Um. Yeah. No, it's yep. cool. You know, as I said, uh, Wilmer Cruzen had issued guidance on um. You know how to avoid spreading the disease at the um. Don't spit. Don't spit. Yes. <laughs> that, that was the whole guidance. <laughs> And it's like, okay, the next day, uh, Wil Wilmer comes out and says, all right, we need to issue more strict guidance here um, after the parade. You know, avoid crowds, cover your mouth when you sneeze, stop spitting, so on and so Don't forth. Spit. Avoiding crowds was the new one. Yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> but uh, at this point, you know, you're shutting the barn door after all the horses have gone, right? right? Within 72 hours, every hospital bed in the city was full. Yeesh. That's that's not so good. I mean, we're yeah. we're we're getting there. Uh, at time of going to recording, we're like waiting, like uh, for that to happen. Maybe like a couple of weeks, a month, maybe. Yep. Uh that's yep. cool. And and in Britain, <laughs> like basically, we just did the exact same thing. Uh we we just kind of like put off doing the suppression stuff because we didn't feel like it. And so yes. like you, you you got these tweets <laughs> of like. Yeah, we had the, we had this tweet of like the worst band in the world, Stereophonics, doing a, a absolutely packed, I don't know why, gig in Cardiff. And I was just like, you, you look at this this footage of like all of these people shoulder to shoulder in like a totally full room, listening to music that is not good, and you're like, you're you're not only are you dying for something that's kind of like mediocre, but you're also possibly killing a bunch of other people, and that's unforgivable. Mm -hmm. uh, Go, go, if you have to break quarantine, see a better band. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed the, uh, you know, uh, Boris Johnson's uh, whole, whole thing is... Um, Meltdown in real time, or whatever the hell he's doing. Hi, uh, I'm Boris Johnson, and this is Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Bor Boris Knoxville, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure why they had to deliver the briefing from like inside a shopping cart that was being pushed <laughs> down a steep hill, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, into into a, a a like in into a swimming pool that's marked coronavirus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still safe with the bee tetherball, man. Yeah. Mm. So all right, but on October third, 
uh, major restrictions are, are enacted, right? So they close all the schools, churches, restaurants, stores, so on, so forth. Uh, yeah, large gatherings are banned. Strict quarantining starts, and it doesn't do shit, no. right? Hmm. Of course. Like I, I, I saw the one, uh, the like uh, head of infectious disease control from the World Health Organization talking about like Ebola outbreaks, and one of the things that he said was the um, the only virtue you can have in this is like not hesitating at all because the time to do the thing that you think you should do is like two weeks ago. Um, yes. So yeah, no, that's that that that's cool. Uh, we can you can like you can put it off and you can have your little seaplane float. Um, but <laughs> it is it's not worth it. To give an example, um, yeah. funerals could only be attended by adult family members. They couldn't be held in churches, um, or public spaces. They closed the bars in Philly, so everybody went to Camden, and then Camden closed the bars two days later. Uh, <laughs> thieves, thieves broke in to a whole, a Andrew Cuomo did this. Yeah. Andrew Cuomo did this. He said that he didn't want to close the bars in New York because people would go to Connecticut and drive drunk. Yeah, I think, you know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, sure. I was going to talk about how, it, it's how true. Uh, in Philadelphia's darkest hour, though, uh, the Commonwealth Brewing Company uh, allowed the city to use its cold brewing facility as a morgue. A thing <laughs> that is true. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I like the. I'm. I'm just looking at this photo. I like the guy on the, like the far left in the middle, who's just like who just has a broom. I think that's a broom. I think sweeping he's up the virus. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's like we sweep up all the spit. Is the thing. Don't spit. Yes. Mm. Don't don't spit. <laughs> don't spit. So, you know the, the. So this was the point where, as Leah mentioned earlier, the the Philadelphia Inquirer went off on him. It was like talk of cheerful things instead of disease. The authorities seem to be going daft. What are they trying to do? Scare everyone to death? Yes. <laughs> Preferable to dying by uh, influenza, man. We had two days of um, like the worst kind of lick spittles of the British press being like, "Oh, well, actually, this 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 like virus strategy that we're doing that no one else is doing is actually is this guided by the science and it's quite good." Sure, um, why not? And, and just kind of just kind of ridiculing anyone who was like, oh, "Are you sure?" So yeah, no, this this is good. I will always trust the press uh, at all times. I don't understand how all of y'all in uh, the British Isles haven't just burned down every newspaper. Oh, like, over well, there. I, uh, inshallah, <laughs> you know, all, all I can say. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll save that for when we're like tying things together at the end and we'll put a big bow on it, but I have like some thoughts about what this means and how it, like, it says a lot about our society and things of that nature. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it turns out the authorities weren't trying to scare everyone to death, um, because, you know, or they couldn't, because by two weeks after the parade, 4,500 people were dead. That'll do it. Of influenza. So, you know, the hospitals were overflowing, the funeral homes were overflowing. I don't think there were any laws against price gouging at this point, so... No, of course, that's, that's just entrepreneurship. Yeah, caskets were unaffordable, undertakers <laughs> started price gouging. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. It, why not? Yeah. yeah. So no, no one can no one can dispose of their their dead loved ones at all. So what to do with rotting corpses became uh, a matter of public health because the, the you know the corpses just rotting was spreading more diseases. Right. Of course. Mm. There's yeah. That's uh, if I can quote from the Philly Voice article uh, I was reading about this quote. Somebody's this is about the the morgue Philly's only morgue back in the day at Thirteenth and Wood. Uh, contain had several hundred corpses in it. Uh, despite a capacity for thirty six bodies were unembalmed, not stored properly, covered only by like dirty sheets. Quote: Some bodies were mortifying, and the stench was nauseating. In the rear of the building, the doors were open, and bodies lying all over the floor. A spectacle for gaping curiosity seekers, including young children. Well, I love that you uh, could just uh, do that back in the day. It was just like yeah, it was just a also thing. Started like coughing up blood and blood from their noses, oh, cool. ears, and eyes. Which, yeah. very nice. Philly, Philly goes hard, yeah. man. If if nothing else, we uh -huh. commit. Uh huh. I I I I do like that. Like, uh, just taking the kids to go and see some dead bodies was like a thing. Uh, like I I feel like there was this gap 
in between, like, when you stopped having public executions and this, and then it just kind of comes roaring back where you're like, hey, let's take the kids to, like, poke some corpses with a stick. Uh, well, well, I mean, they still take the kids to go see dead bodies. That YouTuber guy did it. Well, yeah. oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, the the kids, the kid well, it's more efficient now because the kids do it themselves. They just go on live leak and like yeah, traumatize yeah. themselves <laughs> for the whole like first fifteen years of their lives, just watching ISIS beheading videos and shit. Ah, uh, so, it gets bad enough at some point that Bell Telephone restricts all uh, non medical telephone calls. You couldn't use the telephone except if it was a medical emergency. Well, what is a medical telephone call in this in this context of just being like, Doctor, my wife has the hysteria. What the? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just like it's it's just two doctors having to call each other up with the old timey telephone because they want to discuss their new theories of scientific racism. <laughs> They, they want to discuss the shape of the Irish brain pan as the thing, uh, and that's an emergency. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the you know, telephone switch station was next to the phrenologist office. So. Convenient, at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one other anecdote is that uh, nurses were kidnapped uh, because there were so oh, few cool. nurses to work, you know, either with the war effort or just because they were working themselves to the bone to treat all these people. That there's an anecdote about a, a nurse uh, being. Uh, just a guy grabbing a pulling a nurse into a, a taxi and then basically saying, I'll give you any amount of money to treat my wife. <laughs> but, mm, mm, yeah, I'm d d trying to think of like the jokes I can make here. Do you think they think they uh, you think you think they were just like, Hello, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think when he like grabbed her in the taxi, he was like, Borat voice, my wife? <laughs> <laughs> What if she wasn't a nurse? She just looked like one. <laughs> yeah, what, what if she was cosplaying? These sexy Halloween costumes are all out of control. <laughs> <laughs> the 1918 sexy oh, Halloween God. costume. And it was right around that time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's November, right? I mean, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, here, here's a bunch of people digging a mass grave. I tell you what, that's that's some in. fantastic grave digging. Like very straight lines there. That's oh yeah. You know, you, you appreciate the quality of, of the ditch digging, yeah. yeah. So all right, so uh what's the fallout of this? Well, in, in the end, Philadelphia becomes just the epicenter of Spanish influenza in the United States. Um about thirteen people thirteen thousand people were dead in total by the end of this. Mm. Well, they contrasted a lot with St. Louis, because St. Louis had a, a, a health commissioner who did cancel everything, and so they got off pretty lightly. Um, so, yes, I think yeah. St. Yeah. Louis was 600 dead in total, because they cancelled their Liberty Bond parade, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and so, this was the deadliest parade in the history of the United States. Now, what you may wonder about is, how many Liberty Bonds did they sell? <laughs> yes, uh, of course. Right, and the thing is, I don't know how many they sold. What I do know is the government defaulted on the fourth Liberty Bond sale. They sure oh, did. Jesus, <laughs> of course, because there course. was some, all the way to the there was some Court bullshit actually, about yeah. the gold standard. <laughs> this is like a libertarian nightmare. It's like the government just kind of kills you while it's trying to get money out of you, and then it doesn't pay you back because of the gold standards. Yes. <laughs> this is the this is the exact kind of shit that right now, at this very moment, the Libertarian Party convention, which is going ahead despite Smart coronavirus, boys. that guy is like, Smart boys there. is gonna like take all of his clothes off and <laughs> scream into a microphone. <laughs> about. Oh. <laughs> and maybe they're onto something. Maybe they are. Because Jesus, I can't think of any a, a better argument for libertarianism than the government being like, hey, go to this parade to, to spend money on us, and then they don't pay you back and also you die. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Don't forget that, uh, Oh god, there was like a thousand bodies just awaiting burial by October 12th, uh, and there mm. were not enough uh, undertakers, so, yeah, just just bodies, just yeah, stacked in the streets, cool. just doing stuff.
You, you, you just you get a uh, steam shovel or whatever the technology is <laughs> at just, that time, and you just kind of like bulldozing. Right up with price gouging you know. people. Oh, yeah, yeah, get Mike Mulligan yeah. out here with the steam shovel. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just, just John Henry Marvin, Undertaker. Mike's mass graves, piles of corpses. <laughs> welcome to Mike's mass grave here just... at South Philly. We will bury any amount of people for a fair price. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the idea of like a truckosaurus, but it's a hearse, and then just shovel. Hearsosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we cope with the bleakness in our own ways here. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at the municipal arena. Hearsosaurus. <laughs> uh. I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, the Spanish flu, uh, fuck, I said I wasn't going to call it that. Kansas flu, uh, is, like, by any metric, much, much worse than the coronavirus. Not least because, uh, people kind of wash their hands now, maybe, and they don't make you sleep on a, like, a card table just in a room with, like, 500 other dudes who all have it. Um, and also, like, this was much more deadly just as a disease. So, like, this is kind of instructive, but it's not like, we're not saying go out and invest in steam shovel shares for when Hearst is sore. No, Alice is not saying that. Alice is like, let's all be clear. <laughs> well, there wouldn't be any point in investing in those because the stock market is down to, fuck, I don't even know what now. By the dip. Well, it rallied a thousand dollars because markets are rational, yeah. and you're the idiots. Yeah, yes. but buy buy low, uh, sell high. Um, yes. In invest in. I don't know if there's a multinational Undertaker chain yet. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. The WWE, I think. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what did we learn from this? Hmm. Um. um I. Well, I'm I'm gonna kind of guess and say nothing. Yes, uh, this was uh, November 11th of that year <laughs> on Broad Street. <laughs> just, just all of the survivors just out and about. Yeah, yep. cool. Um, yep, yep. They're they're out there celebrating the wars over. Wait, um, wait, hold up a second. I need you to madden something. You see in the top right corner? Does that say "Don't waste tea"? And then above I, that it says the what? I don't know if it says the war, don't waste it, or I don't know. Well, well, is there a union jack, just like a, a union jack in my city? Uh have we learned? I, 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 I just I just feel like the the whole process of the war was just like putting up ever more elaborate signs to just tell people don't do this thing with no apostrophe. This is like we we, we pan around and there's like a fifty foot high illuminated don't spit. <laughs> like cool. Uh, I, I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to say that, like, we learned nothing. Um, I, I feel like with both the coronavirus and uh, the American flu, um, it, it, it's kind of it's a sea change, right? Like, you, you come out of this period of unsustainable horror of um, the First World War. And like, for better or worse, the moment is 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 like filled with possibility, right? Like, all all is changed, changed utterly, and a terrible beauty is born. And so, I don't know what's going to happen with this other bullshit that we're currently going through. But like, we've already had a conservative government here just institute kind of like fucking like universal basic income and nationalizing shit because it was inevitable and it had to. I so who the fuck knows, right? But it's. The problem with epidemics in general, or pandemics, is that they kind of, they're exploitative of the worst traits of a society. It's it's war, it's poverty, it's inequality, it's spitting in the street for some reason. <laughs> um, and, uh, like, uh, in order for any of those things to change, there has to be some kind of, some, some tumult. And it's, it's not good, of course it isn't, many people uh, are gonna like not fit, not be great out of this. Uh, invest in steam shovels, but like it is, it's one of those kind of things where it's the only way where things change. And maybe, just maybe, there are some improvements out of this. Just like how 
uh, after this happened, people kind of started maybe occasionally, very seldom washing their hands. Um, so who who's to say? But that that's that's my hope. Yeah, I just hope we don't we don't do what we seem to be doing here in the United States, where now the <sighs> now the Republicans are proposing UBI and stuff like this. Embarrassing, you know, yeah. all, all it's fucking through. embarrassing. Yeah, and and like the Democrats are like, ah, oh, you got a means no, test that shit, don't. bro. You could claw it back. <laughs> yeah. that's, the thing that's so fucking embarrassing is that these people, uh, elected officials, seem to fucking forget that like if you want to claw it back via like increased taxes or whatever else, you could do that, and they're just so fucking afraid. All these people are going to be like, well, why are you giving it to everyone? And it's like, because it's a fucking national crisis, dipshit. Like, shit changes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't fucking, I will never be able to understand as long as I live the fucking cowardice of Democrats, like, in times of great moral yeah. upheaval. And it pisses me off so much because we're just going to get Joe fucking Biden, who's out here saying the same <laughs> dumb racist grandfather shit I've had to hear since fucking 1979 about how, like, America's not ready for this or that. It's like, bullshit, man. I'm so fucking tired. Of this, of like managed decline death, and I'm so. Well, this is damn. this is what we can hope yeah, for, right? No, is that is that like <laughs> his history 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 outpaces them, right? Wouldn't be the first time it's happened to the Democrats. Uh, might be the last. We don't know. Um, oh, but like, Democrats are feeling pretty whiggish right now. Not just yeah, for the good yeah, of the fucking I, country. Just die already. <laughs> 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 well like the thing the thing we had here was that like we have uh we have now a three month pause on paying mortgages, uh, but nothing if you're renting. And most people are renting. That's so. shit, just oh shit like that. It's just these like half assed, half baked things that piss me off so yeah. much. And like Mitt fucking yeah. Romney is flanking you to the left of economic policy. And Kamala Harris is out here like, well, my lift act would give five I don't fucking care. You can't don't 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 <laughs> in this edit, please please censor me. Yeah, but like, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll but bleep like, it. We'll bleep I, it. I, yeah. Liam out here using gendered insults. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I my mother would be very disappointed if she heard me use the word. <laughs> um, but I'm so it's so fucking embarrassing to be to to like to get your hopes up. Oh wait, I got I got a, I got a swear button. Well, S -s -s say bitch again. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll work Did that, that work? It's a little late, but that's fine. It, it, it was a little late, yeah. Oh, god damn it. What, whatever, <laughs> it's fine. We just, like, <laughs> just go back and put that on all of the other various bitches. Uh... <laughs> I, I also have a, a tone generator, Alice. It's, it's just not live. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a button, and I'm so excited that I have a button. Anyway, like, uh, yeah, we, we, we may have to, like, uh, I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen, none of us know what's gonna happen, uh, it, it both isn't as bad as this, we also didn't just have the First World War, so, you know, that's an, an extra bonus, right, we didn't just spend the last four years just, like, knee-deep in, like, blood and, like, shit and everything, uh, so, yeah, I... I don't know how coronavirus or whatever is going to play out, but in the meantime, please, please, please stay Wash home for hands. the duration. Wash your don't fucking spit. hands. Don't be a, don't don't be a fucking hero, man. It's that same shit in Philly. I'm yeah. just, oh, I'm young and I'm, I'm not going to die. It's like, probably not. But I honestly hope you do if you're that fucking stupid. Like... <laughs> You know, get a, get a, if, if, when you're washing your hands, what you should do is get a moisturizing soap. So your hands don't dry out, like it's really annoying. I got you. I got yeah. you the moisturizing one. That's why we have a hundred <laughs> ounces sh of sh soft soap in the living room right now. Yeah, well, I got the last one at the pharmacy, <laughs> so you know. We'll, we'll, we'll. Hmm. Sh shouts out to uh, people with eczema who yep. like are just fucking dying. like absolutely just like fucking dying out here with like just like wearing two boxing gloves, <laughs> looking ass. Uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, I, I I see your sacrifice and I salute you. Thank you for not like killing my mom. Um, yeah, Every, everybody else, everybody who's going to clubs and like who is on Die the street, already. fuck you. Yeah, you, fuck you. Um, what is it like? A, it's like a, a like a one percent, slightly less mortality rate if you're between twenty and twenty nine, which is like that's me. It's, still. Like, it's like point uh, point point something point three or yeah, four. Yeah, like or it might be like, like point. Oh, well, I I. Hmm. 
Who's to say? But like, I, I, I fervently hope that like, if there's any justice, that's entirely comprised of the people who were just like, yeah, it's just flu. I'll just, it's fine. I'll get over it. It's, just, it's yeah. I mean, if your, you know, your like, idea yeah, of right. recreation is going into a club and getting packed in with like fifteen hundred people, and it's like the goddamn black hole of Calcutta in there, <laughs> just don't, just don't do that. Don't do that. I don't understand why people do that in the first place, but don't do that. Oh, did you did you did you see the thing that people have been doing in Italy where they're like doing like they're playing music and like they're doing lights and stuff off of their balconies and it's like no, no, I, yeah. I stay home yeah. to avoid that. Yes. You're bringing it and everyone's to me. like, oh, look how the uh, species carries on. And I'm like, really wish it wasn't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. President Xi, uh, fire when ready. Yes. Um. I agree. <laughs> President Xi, save us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's your pesadism. Yeah. So, anyway, and, and next uh, next week, assuming President Xi doesn't save us, Bastard. Um, mm -hmm. will be an episode on the Tacoma's <laughs> Narrows Bridge disaster. Um, yes, and we will we will keep the content factory churning for as long as we yeah. are able. Is the thing we'll go into the uh, content this, this bunker. One, <laughs> yeah, this, this this one obviously um, you probably wouldn't want to wouldn't would not want to have listened to if you were trying to like keep your mind off of it. So we're gonna have more stuff that is like that for you soon. Uh, and like it, so if you just want to like enjoy your quarantine with like uh, an hour of like hearing about how I don't know a mine exploded because a donkey kicked over a lamp or something, <laughs> we're 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 gonna be we're gonna be there we're here for. for you with That's that. For, yes, yes. Uh, we 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 are like the the sixth emergency service, yes. right? The the thin podcast line, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't actually make that pla flag because there's no color of sound to to put in <laughs> to put in the middle there. You'd have to put like a little like audio wave. Yes, uh, like a like a waveform. <laughs> you know that sword they have on the Saudi Arabian flag? Maybe we could just use that. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's a cool sword too. It's this is the problem with Saudi Arabia. It's like for a fucking evil country, they have a cool flag. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that'll that'll mm. just be the podcaster flag. Will be the Saudi Arabian yeah. flag, but instead of the Arabic yeah. text, it just says podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> it just says podcasting in Arabic yes. for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know, someone's gonna make that and like reply to the account with it. That rules. Thank you, Thank you for I, all I, the fans, by the way. Yes, I, I'm so happy with all of our fans. By the way. The the problematics because I asked them at one point what we should probably have like a name for them and they're like oh problematics and I'm like yeah that's, yeah I like that's the good. problematics so, yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I like the idea so just being like yeah I'm a real like trying to impress a girl on a date God forbid like yeah I'm a real problem head <laughs> you know those those, those are my, like I God forbid if you're really big enough where somebody brags about knowing us personally I fucking hope you don't yeah <laughs> yeah I. <laughs> Yeah, I have a lot of problems. <laughs> we all do, bud. <laughs> In case there are any listeners out there who are getting ready for a date, uh, first of all, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and second of all, uh, yeah. definitely brag about us uh, to your date. Yeah. Br brag yeah. about us on your Skype dates. Yes. Uh, br brag about us in your Zoom university lecture. Uh, bra brag about us to your pets who you're staying home with <laughs> on your um, Zoom group uh, date. Oh, yeah, yes. uh, lean out of your balcony and scream at people to listen to yeah, the actually, podcast. Do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 to do that. We, we need some um, super liminal marketing. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and and, and don't, don't don't spit. spit. Yeah, don't spit. Don't spit. spit. All right. Any pitches before we go? Uh, Commercials, uh, etc. Listen to Trash Future. I've been I've been trying to like uh, push that more because our our subscribers are getting stagnant and we can't do that. Even though we are posting cringe, uh, we cannot <laughs> afford to lose subscriber. Uh, that's that's like half my income. Uh, this is the other half. Yeah. So subscribe to our Patreon. Yes. Subscribe to the Trash Future Patreon. I'm I'm uh, on the next Trash Future Patreon episode. 
Yes. yes. Yeah, you are, and I'm not yeah, because I literally I was so sick I slept through it. Damn. Uh, Jesus. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I I I don't know if it was the coronavirus or what, but I was just out for days, and I just I slept through it. So if you want to listen to uh, like Justin do all about Eve shit and like take my place yes. and uh, be be a better Trash Future host than me, <laughs> listen to <laughs> Trash Future. <laughs> we talked about Elon Musk's Mars colonization plan. Colonization. Oh, I'm sure that's. Com I'm. I, yep. I'm. I'm sure. Co 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 Columnification. Cosmization. Yes. Uh, mm. I actually would also like to make a pitch. Hi, I'm. I'm Please. Liam Anderson. You may know me from such podcasts as this one. Uh, so, in the next <laughs> few weeks, um, I'm going to be. Uh, I don't have a ton of it. Uh, you know, beyond the initial topics, I'm going to be doing a bunch of audio histories. Uh, they're probably going to just be kind of roughly recorded, just about things I personally find interesting. Uh, I got to talk to Do Not Eat about the uh, audio and such. But uh, look for that. Mm. It's going to be like my drunk history, except you're always drunk. Yes. So it's just history. Oh, you're starting a solo career. Well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you have to do is you have to have us on as guests and yeah. then be like uh like liam's drunk history featuring oh yeah like yes that. there mm. you go uh so i guess yeah. that'll do it for this week yes we're good yeah, yeah. and um shirts shirts yeah. are coming shirts are one of us talks yeah. to the printer we, we have i did talk to the yeah. printer. Oh, okay <laughs> he hasn't gotten back to me i gotta yell yeah, at him yeah, again yeah. <laughs> Yeah, God damn it. I know, I yeah, know, okay. I know I'm friends with the Bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only this podcast would both be dependent for its shirts on a guy named Union Pete and also not have Union Pete get back to us. <laughs> Get your shit together, Union Pete. So when when the shirts get here, they will be Union made. Um. <laughs> yes, yes, they will. By by Union Pete. Yeah, uh, it's a really good design. We're really happy with it. We don't want to spoil it yet. Yeah. Uh, what we have told you so far, I think, is that the uh, they are designed by uh, Matt Lubchansky, who also did the uh, Trash Future shirts, which you can also get. Uh, it's it's super good. And also, you have to subscribe to our Patreon for them to make sense. Yes. So do that yes. too. I mean, it, it would be kind of a flex just to wear the shirt without understanding the joke. I appreciate like, that. I guess. Uh, <laughs> Give us your money. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So I th Mike Bloomberg never did pay us. No, I still have the tear up. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if I should take the tear down nope. or maybe nope. I'll just leave it there. Well, you should, you just you should leave it there like, in case. Yeah, you should add like a means tested Kamala Harris tier where it's like $250 a month. I'd have to add um, about 1,200 tiers to get to the Kamala Harris oh, yeah, level of means did, tested. Like this one. Uh, take a second to thank whichever guy uh, is subscribed at $34.50 a month to our Patreon. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate it, but buddy. Ben, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's um eleven dollars each and change. Yeah. Uh huh. I could buy a whole bunch of like I could I could buy like a nice uh not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> I can't whatever I was gonna yeah. buy, I can't buy it anymore because I'm stuck yeah. in my house. You, you, you just you, you can you can like maybe go out once a week to stand in line for an hour two meters apart from everyone else to buy like a Tin of beans or something. Every single person, um, when we're out of this quarantine, <laughs> is going to have saved up like yeah. three months of income, assuming they're still getting paid, and they're yeah. all going to lease a Camaro. <laughs> That's true. We're all going to lease a Camaro, and also there's going to be like, you know, what the problem is in a hundred years' time, people are going to be incredibly mad at uh, Boomer Two because everybody's going to like. Fuck and like nine months after the end of quarantine, the population spike like that, uh, and they're going to be insufferable. So yeah, watch out for that. That makes us the uh, 
the, the, uh, the greatest yeah, generation, the greatest generation. Huh? yeah because we're podcasters because we're, we're the ones who fucking survived coronavirus and the posting and like, wars and the posting wars and beat climate change <laughs> yes uh uh yeah. d- whatever world war three is gonna be we're gonna win that too <laughs> um we're all going to be in the Iranian army defeating the great oh, Satan. Boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here at, uh, avenging the mem- memory of General Suleimani. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Ya Shahid. Glad we all have mm-hmm. an optimistic vision of the future. Yeah, that's it. Um, you got to. You got to. Otherwise, you'd go crazy. Right. And don't don't do that. Yes. Um. All right. <laughs> stay safe. Stay indoors. Uh. Don't don't spit. Don't spit. Don't spit. Uh. Yep. All right. That's the podcast. Uh, bye, everyone. <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right. That was good. Yeah. Uh...